Good afternoon, everybody. Hopefully you can all hear me well, loud and clear. Um, thank you so much to everybody who's joining us on this, um, what's quite a rainy afternoon for me here in Nottingham. I'm really excited to have everybody here, members and non-members. Um, as you should all be aware, this is our working group open house. So as I'm sure many of you are aware, working groups are a really crucial component in sort of our development and working alongside the industry. And it's a really crucial part, part of our sort of two-way communication between industry um, and the organisation and to help support the work that we do in terms of engaging with government. Um, so I'm just going to introduce a few housekeeping rules before I, I send you over to, to Chris and Joe, who will be sort of leading the session, but um, just in the interim. On the right hand side, you should see a box. Um, you can add any comments to the chat function. You can also, if you should be able to see a Q&A sort of panel. Um, please do fill in um, any comments or questions there. And what we'll do is um, we'll check the questions at the end of each section, um, at the end of each working group, um, and just go through and answer any queries that may come up. Um, and then as we get to the end of the session, there will be an opportunity at the end to network with other people who are joining us today, um, myself, who's one of the lead analysts here, um, or Joe, who's, who's going to be leading on the working group work, um, will be floating around the networking space. So please do come and find us afterwards as well. Um, so with that in mind, I'm really keen to bring up Chris, who will be giving some open remarks as our chairman. So I'm just inviting him to the stage. So hopefully Chris will be, there's always a, a slight delay with these things, but hopefully Chris will be able to turn on his camera and his microphone and will be able to join us here. Perfect. Hello. We can hear you, um, just can't see you just yet. And hopefully you can see me as well. Perfect. I'm finally getting some of the glitches out of the system. Um, first of all, let me thank everybody who has joined uh, this session. Um, uh, as Leanne said, the working groups are absolutely key to the credibility of ADBA um, in representing the industry to the government and other public authorities and are particularly key at the moment. Uh, one of the reasons why after strategic advisor for ADBA up until 2018 and then I had a lot of other doing, I accepted the um, offer to come back as chair in June is precisely because I think that these are incredibly exciting times for us in the AD industry. Uh, it's always rough to uh, appear to be um, uh, taking advantage of other people's appalling misfortunes, but the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the consequent impact on European gas markets has completely put the focus on any respectable alternative to Russian gas. And that's not going to change anytime soon. Gas is by its nature uh, heavily capital intensive because of the grid infrastructure. And that's why I think that the focus all the way across Europe and increasingly in the UK is going to be on the alternatives to imports of Russian national, natural gas into Europe, including, of course, biogas. And, uh, and that's why the working groups are absolutely key. I am in no doubt at all that the industry is going to expand, is expanding, and will continue to expand. How quickly we expand when we're pushing at an open door, when people are wanting more uh, biogas as quickly as possible will depend on us and on whether we can persuade governments and other public authorities to relieve some of the obstacles in the way of rapid expansion, whether they be planning, regulation, digest aid, grid connection, um, finance, uh, in getting a long-term uh, price guaranteed so that the project is bankable, all of these things will matter and all of these things are absolutely 
crucial for us to understand the real world constraints that you are experiencing. Um, and that's why the working groups are absolutely key at all times, but particularly now, because they will help uh, bring us together around a consensus about what we need to do to maximize the opportunities uh, for the sector and hence minimize uh, the influence of uh, Russian gas and Gazprom on European gas prices and what you can see with the holding of uh, the West to ransom uh, by Vladimir Putin. So the stakes are very high. The opportunities are enormous. I am absolutely confident about expansion and I am absolutely delighted that we've had good response on the working groups precisely because your role is so important in this process. So thank you very much again. And I'd like to now hand over to Joe, who's going to go through some of the details on uh, the working groups and, um, and, and how we go forward with them. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Um, hi, everyone. Leanne, have you managed to get the slides that we can share? Yeah. So hopefully you can all see the slides alongside me now. Um, if you have any questions and comments, then please feel free to put them in the chat as we go along. Um, so I thought I'd just introduce myself briefly. Uh, so my name is Joe Goad, and I started as a policy analyst at ADPA in July, working alongside Leanne and Wasandara in the policy team. My areas generally cover environmental impacts, organics, waste management, agriculture, feedstocks and digestates, amongst other things. But I'm also coordinating the relaunch of the ABBA Working Groups for 2022. And for the remainder of this presentation, I'll be running through the five working groups that will be launching in due course. I would just like to say that these are initial proposals and ideas. We welcome all feedback and input from you. And I'd encourage you to make comments, suggestions and ask questions throughout. The working groups will largely be self-directed with chairs to set the direction of the groups, but myself and my other colleagues will be part of the groups also, supporting admin and also feeding in from our end. Uh, we think meetings will be held every two to four months, depending on levels of activity at the time, but we really want these meetings to be useful and to have clear objectives and outcomes. So now we're gonna move on to the first work, work, working group, uh, which is the food waste working group. So just a brief description of this working group, RAP estimates that 35% of the UK's greenhouse gas emissions come from the food sector, including imports, production and waste emissions. When food waste is sent to landfill and incineration, methane and CO2 are released, contributing to climate change. AD is a key technology in reducing these emissions by capturing biogas and processing it into usable products. Furthermore, valuable nutrients from foods including nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus are recycled into a usable organic fertilizer, digestate. However, at present, collection of pre-farm gate waste, household, commercial and industrial food waste is patchy, with some areas of the UK excelling while others lag behind. For example, South Oxfordshire Council offers weekly food waste collections with easy to follow guidance for households and all food waste is sent to an AD plant in Wallingford. This plant creates enough energy to power 4,800 homes and provides digestate to many farmers. We can learn from examples like this as food waste collections roll out across the rest of the UK. Government policy has missed the mark on the urgent need for separate food waste collections repeatedly. The original proposal laid out in the 25-year environment plan has been pushed back from 2023 to 2025 and watered down with potential exemptions extending up to 2031 for local authorities that have existing waste disposal contracts. Nonetheless, there has been progress with the consistency in recycling consultation, of which we're still waiting for the response, the upcoming mandatory digital waste tracking for businesses and anticipated separate food waste collections from 2025. It is vital to the future development of AD plants that they match local capacity needs. So the AD sector needs to be prepared for anticipated changes in policy. This working group will work to address the challenges facing food waste based AD, including regional capacity constraints, feedstock security, the GGSS timeframe, 
and ensuring that the industry produces high quality digestates. So now moving on to some of the aims and deliverables that we have suggested so far. So ultimately, the working group should assist the industry in preparing for the rollout of separate food waste collections and ensuring that there are high quality feedstocks to produce high quality products. This will include feeding into ADBA responses to appropriate consultations by providing relevant data and drawing attention to relevant issues. The working group should also promote best practice by shedding light on strong local authority operator partnerships and highlighting technological best practice. Members will need to assist local authorities in how best to collect food waste and coordinate this feedstock in reaching AD plants. The working group should also address issues around matching food waste arisings with existing capacity and identifying scope for industry development. It should focus on improving digestate quality through developments in plastic contamination, including looking at new technologies and techniques, as well as tackling front end communication through contamination through public education. So this work will align with ABBA's contribution to RAP's organics roadmap. Areas covered by this include drafting guidance for waste collection companies, improving the quality of commercial food waste collections, and addressing issues around biodegradable packaging in the waste stream. The group should develop a blueprint for AD operators who take on food waste, promoting best practice. Furthermore, the group should keep up to date with developments in scientific understandings and government regulations on plastic and other contaminants. These should be communicated to the industry and published on the ADBA website. The working group would be responsible for developing ADBA's position on compostable and biodegradable packaging by assessing, assessing existing frameworks such as those proposed by the Plastic Planet Report and requirements set out by RAPS Organics Roadmap. To progress this issue even further, the working group could submit a proposal to the BSI for the development of a digestible standard for packaging. Finally, we suggest that the working group delivers a repertoire of best practice case studies, which highlight instances of collaboration between operators, businesses, local authorities and waste producers. Okay, so that's the first working group. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments about this working group, would you like to put them in the chat now and Leanne and myself can address these? Okay, if there's no questions on this yet, then I'll move on to the next working group. But as these come along, we can add those back up. Somebody said engagement with LARAC and CIWM will be critical for this group. Okay, we will take that on board. And yeah, I agree, LARAC will be key in this working group in particular. Okay, so moving on to the next working group. This one is on sustainable bioenergy crop production. So for the description of this working group, um, we frequently refer to the sixth carbon budget report produced by the Climate Change Committee, which stated that by 2035, 260,000 hectares of agricultural land would need to convert to growing bioenergy crops to meet carbon emission reduction targets. Despite being recognised as important for the UK's shift to net zero, bioenergy crops are still seen as a contentious topic. Concerns around the food versus fuel debate, poor land management and biodiversity are shared by land managers the public sector and civil society alike. There are many advantages to using bioenergy crops as feedstocks, including low contamination levels, energy efficiency, predictability and enhanced value of digestate. So this working group aims to provide support to the sector, sector by providing guidance on how bioenergy crops can be sustainable. So in terms of aims and deliverables, the first aim of this working group should be to determine exactly what a bio sustainable bioenergy crop looks like. It should explore best practice in terms of regenerative farming, low emission planting techniques and crop rotations amongst other topics. It should then address commonly held reservations about bioenergy crops such as food versus fuel, concerns around monocropping, poor biodiversity and poor land management. From this, the working group will develop ADBA's position on sustainable bioenergy crops. 
The group should focus on engaging with DEFRA and BAYS to ensure that they are adequately informed about bioenergy crops, as well as facilitating public engagement and liaising with farmers. Suggested deliverables for the working group include updating ADVA's Good Crop Guide to reflect the latest science around bioenergy crop management, developing a position paper to outline ADVA's support for sustainable bioenergy crops in AD, updating the ADVA website to include a repository of evidence on sustainable bioenergy crops, and finally, to release a sustainable bioenergy crop pamphlet that is easily accessible and can be circulated to those less involved in the AD industry. The working group will also be able to set its own deliverables, as well as feeding into consultations relating to the area. So yeah, that's the next working group. Um, does anybody have any comments or questions on this one? Question from Rohit. We're heading into strong climate headwinds. Should we really be forsaking an opportunity to build food supply security? Um, yeah. yeah, so I think one of the important sort of things that we need to look at as part of this working group is to make sure that we're encouraging systems that really make use of, you know, for example, rotational cropping systems. I think there's ways of making sure that energy crops are raised in a sustainable manner in a way that doesn't make it a binary argument between food versus fuel. And I think one of the key streams with this working group is to really make sure that we've got all the evidence base developed and and really to hand um, and, and really have a look at, you know, how those systems can work in harmony. I hope hopefully that answers your question, but also happy to, to take that up further if you have any more questions. Yeah, and I think something that we maybe need to move away from is it being a binary and um, it can be food and fuel and um, if you have like long crop rotations. So there's all sort of things that are up for discussion in this working group. Um, but the focus is on really trying to make it sustainable. So obviously you want to limit the like, impacts on society and the environment. Like we want to enhance society and environment as well. So yeah hopefully that answers your question but again if you have any follow-ups then please put them in the chat and um, so if there's no other questions we move on to the next working group so the next working group i'll be covering is the wastewater and bioresources working group um, so the wastewater sector really spearheaded the ad industry in the uk with a recent Jacobs report published by Ofwat estimating that 93% of biosolids were treated through AD or advanced AD in 2020. The wastewater sector is keen to move towards advanced anaerobic digestion to increase renewable energy yield and produce a higher quality biosolid to be recycled to land, maximising value from wastewater treatment. However, recent uncoordinated regulation change, such as the Industrial Emissions Directive, the EA sludge strategy and changes to rule one of the farming rules for water have meant that the water industry has had to suspend investment plans, instead committing funds to aging AD plants to meet the tight turnaround on these new regulations. Furthermore, these new regulations are often considered in isolation without a holistic assessment on environmental impacts. For example, the new farming rules for water are meant to reduce nitrate diffuse pollution in water bodies but simultaneously make it very difficult to spread sludge derived digestates to agricultural land. However, this has unintended consequences for other outcomes, including a potential 5% increase in ammonia emissions and a 2% increase in phosphorus losses. Although George Eustace recently suspended the ban on spreading digestates during autumn and winter, the uncertainty around future regulation is still concerning for those in the industry. As a result of this, the water industry is call calling for a holistic national bioresources strategy to allow long term planning for the water industry, providing confidence for third party investors. The wastewater companies are also interested in widening engagement with other areas of the AD industry to exchange knowledge, trade feedstocks and to develop a wider bioresources market. So this working group will facilitate these new relationships as water companies move into a new era for biosolids treatment. 
so on to the suggested aims and deliverables. The aim of this working group will be to assist the development of a strong bioresources sector that is market driven and fair. As CHP subsidies wind down, the working group should identify possible next steps for wastewater treatment AD plants. This is an opportune moment for CHP conversions to biomethane plants, which have higher yields of green gas. The working group would help to develop an evidence base to present to Bayes to facilitate the consideration of CHP conversions to be included in the green gas support scheme. The working group would keep in mind the ongoing work of the CIWEM in developing a bioresources strategy, including ideas to boost the value of digestates. Additionally, additionally, in anticipation of the strengthening of future regulations, the working group would address issues on forever chemicals and recovery of ammonia and phosphorus, which may prevent the spreading of wastewater derived bioresources to land. The wastewater industry is keen to work with other areas of the sector on this. In terms of deliverables, a key one will be unlocking issues around co-digestion to expand the market for bioresources. The group would also work to de-risk investment and consider developing a long-term strategy for bioresources. It would also assist in responding to consultations relating to wastewater on behalf of APA. So that's the next working group. Um, I'd just like to reiterate that this working group is open to all members, especially those looking to expand the bioresources bio market, not just to the wastewater companies. Um, so does anybody have any questions or comments about this working group? Oh, we've got one in the Q&A. What is the name of this working group? Uh, this is the Wastewater and Bioresources Working Group. Okay, um, if there's no more questions on this, then we'll move on to the next one. Um, so the next working group is on Small on Farm AD. Okay. So British agriculture is mainly comprised of small to medium sized farms. Feedstocks from small to medium sized farms have the biggest untapped potential for AD in the UK with an estimated 90 million tonnes of manures and slurries and 3.6 million tonnes of pre-farm gate waste crop residues in potential feedstocks. Support schemes and markets favour high capacity, high biogas yielding farms with little to no financial opportunity for carbon intensity and circular agricultural practice. This means that small livestock farms in particular are disincentivized to invest in AD due to large capex and opex costs. Small on-farm AD will help to abate methane emissions from the agricultural sector, one of which, one which is frequently cited as a high emission sector. Furthermore, increased uptake of small on farm AD will help many farmers to reduce energy costs and achieve self sufficiency. Yet there is low uptake due to economic barriers such as those listed above and technological gaps, although this is a market that is growing. Schemes such as the Environmental Land Management Scheme and the Sustainable Farming Incentive have so far failed to deliver any clear pathway or support to directly reducing greenhouse gas emissions on farms and the future of such schemes, schemes remains to be seen. The role of this working group will be to assess economic barriers, identify techno technological gaps and link these to research and development, as well as addressing some other ethical and regulatory issues associated with small on farm AD, generally covering plants that with a 250 kilowatt output and below. So moving on to their aims and deliverables, the working group will assist the development of this market through a range of aims. To tackle the policy side of this issue, the working group should identify a core set of policy asks to tailor lobbying to the barriers facing small on farm AD. The group should also identify and act on key technological gaps, including discussing the possibility of a feasibility study to better understand the needs of the industry. All talk should centre around reducing the capex and opex costs facing small on farm AD. Furthermore, issues around availability of livestock feedstock should be discussed. Livestock is usually only housed indoors during the colder months, meaning that feedstock availability is variable throughout the year. This has knock-on implications on the payback times for small, 
for small livestock farmers that choose to invest in AD? Might there be any technological solutions to this problem? The working group will support ADBA's work to facilitate favourable conditions for the uptake of small on-farm AD, including supporting ADBA in addressing regulatory issues such as the T24 exemption. Additionally, the working group will work to increase confidence in small-scale technologies to facilitate uptake of these. This could be through measures such as case studies and assessing the feasibility of a proposal to the BSI to create a standard for small-scale AD technologies. This will provide confidence for farmers looking to invest in these projects. So does anybody have any questions, comments or suggestions for this working group? Right. So Dr. Peter Waters, sorry if I said that wrong, can off what help push this in the framework cycle. I'm guessing that this is about the wastewater and bioresources group. I think off, I think off oh, Leander, do you want to speak? No, carry on. I think off what really are the ones that are pushing the bioresources market and the ones that want uh, wastewater treat wastewater group treatment yeah companies that's it to um expand into a wider bioresources market so i think they're the ones pushing it and we this group will help to facilitate them in doing that um and something in the framework cycle the five-year framework cycle is something that we're aware of and obviously it's a bit different for uh, wastewater companies because they have a legal obligation to deal with the waste um so something that would come into this working group would be trying to iron out issues to do with that but yeah i hope that answers your question uh aiden gill standard rules and bespoke permitting costs and permitting delays are also significant barriers in the current environment yeah i think that's something that we are quite aware of leanne yeah definitely and that's something that um we look to address sort of across i guess all working groups is looking at the regulatory constraints to that as well so it is something that we're we're really aware of we, we engage with the ea on it and i think this is a really great opportunity through this working group to to address what the barriers are specifically within developing on farm ad um so yeah completely agree with you there yeah, and then Dr. Peter Watters, again, I'm really sorry. Excellent presentation on French small farm AD plants at Green Gas Day yesterday. Yeah, me and Liam were both there and we thought that was really interesting to listen to. So you can definitely try and learn from there what they've done over there and maybe what's gone well and what hasn't gone well. Um, can ADBA help overcome the legacy of poor performance from early generation plants in this space, big marketing risk. I think the development, again, so one of the, some of the suggestions that we've had put forward to us in the past is around um, really shouting about the the um, the times when it's gone well, the, the good examples of the technology that's out there, um, helping join the dots, um, you know, pulling together case studies, but then also looking at, you know, one of the things that was suggested was the idea of a BSI standard. So I think making sure that um, technology is is there and we're focusing on the right technologies and um, helping get those to market is something that we're really, um, you know, I, I think making sure that we address both the policy, the technology barriers um, is, is key to this. So it's not just um, policy focused, it is um sort of market and technology as well yeah and i think just if we're going to expand this we need to make sure that the quality and trust and transparency really is there so that would be central to i think many of the themes in that working group um perhaps we need a financing model as well yeah i agree with this i think financing is probably the biggest barrier like there's a few regulatory things as well but um, we were discussing this, like maybe post GGSS, seeing if there's anything that we can do to help support the small on farm AD financially. Um, Leanne, have you got anything to say on that? No, nothing else. Okay. Um, 
Support on the development of electricity network could support export of electricity on farms and by extension on farm AD. Electricity network. Yeah, that's a really, really interesting point. I think one of the things that we'll do is we'll make a note of everything that's suggested in um, in the comments here and, and we'll build them all the feedback into uh, into the group. So I think um, if you do have suggestions and comments, please do keep them coming and um, sign up for the working groups as well so that we can continue the conversation within those as well. Yeah, echoing that, I think with the IEA task 37 have a lot of evidence for farm AD which can be drawn upon IIRC they found that on farm AD has the best CO2 benefit per pound of any renewable technology so that is a good statistic to have <laughs> um, but yeah things like that I think will be really central to developing the messaging from this working group as well and um, we have one message in the Q&A the one that Joe is presenting now is the food waste group, Mario. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Christina. That must be a legacy. OK, so if that's all the questions and comments for now, we'll move on to the next work. Um, so moving on to the final working group, this one is called the Carbon Intensity of Biogas Working Group. Yeah. Um, so current political recognition of the AD sector favours biomethane production as an energy source, seen through the valuing of biomethane injection only within the GGSS. However, the effect of this is that the feedstocks that are low biogas yielding are becoming marginalised and valued less highly by the market. This has resulted in a skewing of the market towards feedstocks that are crop and food waste based. To reach net zero, anaerobic digestion must be used to its full capacity to treat unavoidable unavo organic waste. AD can decarbonise some of the most complex sectors, including heat and transport. Yet without the valuation of carbon savings from AD, the finances of investing in AD and subsequent OPEX costs do not stack up. Currently, biomethane certificates with lower carbon intensities have higher value, reflecting the commercial demand for decarbonisation. However, while carbon markets do exist, these are voluntary and do not guarantee the inclusion of AD. This working group will account for carbon intensity savings of treating organic waste through AD by providing robust life cycle assessments for different feedstocks, technologies and treatment techniques. By providing trustworthy carbon intensity assessments, investors' confidence will be improved helping to move the AD sector away from subsidies. At the same time, the economic value of lower biogas yielding feedstocks will be improved, ensuring that all types of value from AD products are recognised. So in terms of aims and deliverables, the working group would be responsible for examining the different existing methodologies that assess the carbon intensity of biogas, for example, RED2 and the LCFS. It would explore how carbon intensity is currently valued in the voluntary and compulsory markets and keep track of any changes to this. Double counting of carbon would limit the trust in an already, scru already scrutinised carbon markets. So the group would assess the risk of this and determine how to prevent double counting. With improved technology utilisation and storage of bio CO2, this will become more prevalent so the group should keep track of how this would affect the carbon intensity of biogas. Hydrogen has become a real buzzword in the energy sector, so the group could try to understand how biohydrogen with and without carbon capture and storage would alter carbon intensity of AD. The working group should produce a report on the existing methodologies that quantify the carbon intensity of biogas. It should also establish the range of possible intensities from different feedstocks and cate categorise these into low, medium and high intensities. Then the working group should weigh up the cost effectiveness of production from the different feedstocks with carbon prices and the group could also produce a pamphlet and some easily accessible infographics to aid dissemination of information to stakeholders such as Bayes, the DFT and the public. Finally, the group should gather and present air quality data from biogas derived fuels to inform the DFT's low carbon fuel strategy. So that was the final working group. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to reiterate that these are all suggestions. We want the working groups to be forums for discussion and to have flexible goals based on what you, 
the experts feel the direction of the working group should be. The working groups we have chosen cover targeted areas that we think will address issues to support the development of the AD industry in the UK. Themes of communications and R&D will be covered within these working groups. But again, I'd like to reiterate that we are always open to feedback from members on alternative groups. So with that being said, does anybody have any questions or comments on the carbon intensity of biogas working group? Um, Becky Greaves, was there a proposal to have an R&D working group too? Leanne, do you want to cover that question? So um, the suggested um, group, um, I think at the moment we think that it might be better to sort of keep development within um, some of the other working groups. Um, but if there's proposals um, for aims, deliverables, and, and maybe if somebody wants to chair that, then we can certainly have a look at that and see where whether it would be better to keep that within a certain um, work field that's already in, in play or whether we set up our own. Okay, Mark has said, what is the time scale for the first meeting of each group? Um, so I think the plan was after this to gather all of the sign-ups and then from that, we'll try and find a chair. Um, but hopefully the, the time scale will be in the next month or two to set up all of the working groups. Yeah, is that that's correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I, I just want to reiterate, so I'll share the link in, um, in the chat straight after this and just encourage everybody who is interested and hasn't already done so to sign up um and then if and then we'll, we'll progress with those according to you know the the one that needs to be set up first and has the most interest etc um so but yeah in the next couple of months they'll they'll be set up yeah does anybody how else have any questions or comments to put in the chat Okay, if not, then I think we'll return to the tables. There'll be an opportunity for networking. Um, and also Leanne and I and other members from ADVA will be around. So if you want to come and find us, I think if you double click on the tables, then you can come over and ask us any questions that you might have. And that will be uh, face to face or camera to camera, I guess. But yeah, Leanne, is there anything you want to add or is that okay? No. Just thanks everybody for joining us and yep, we'll, we'll see you all on the other side. Yeah, thank you so much.